Okay, you're gonna love this interview. I'm bringing you something really interesting and unique I stumbled upon over the weekend. Your peachy interview today is with Grand Artique. And this is the owner, Shane Dolan. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yep. So I actually came down this weekend, ended up buying this really cool hat and found a million things that I had to have. But while I was here, I overheard Shane working with his customers and I knew that he would be a fantastic peachy interview. So Grand Artique's been around since 2006. That's You're right. still here. You've managed to find a way to stay relevant and keep your customers coming back. So there's a ton to learn today. Stay tuned. And you're going to definitely want to hear everything Shane has to say. OK. I'm ready. You're up. All right. OK, let's do it. <laughs> uh, Grand Artique is, is more of a place for creators, innovators, like-minded thinkers, people that want to think outside the box and create something new and be a part of something memorable. Um, Grand Artique is something that is a part of me. It feels more like it's uh, my place of refuge, my space to be myself. Um, it doesn't feel like work, it always feels like fun. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very fortunate to be in this position. Um, I'm surrounded by a lot of beautiful people and people that keep me creating and keep innovating and keep changing and pushing the envelope towards something bigger and better. Um, we like to think at Grand Artique, it's, uh, it's bigger than yourself. Uh, you're a part of something that is much more than just an everyday shop. Um, we do do the shop and that's part of what we do and who we are, but it's not everything that we're about. Um, and back in 2006, when my brother and I were first starting this company um, and this little shop, we wrote on the back of this golden ticket uh, our mission statement, which was to bring in everything in our life that we wanted. And that was more friends and more fun and more interaction, more art, more community, more people to be surrounded by that we wanted to spend our time with. And also bringing in flags and rugs and trinkets and things that you see inside the shop. And all of those things came true when I wrote it down. Um, it started to manifest. It started to happen. Everything started to bubble up from the ground. And we, uh, we became the Grand Artique, which is uh, a very unusual place to be, but something that we feel right at home. Yeah, so the retail shop is, we've called it the Grand Artique Salvage uh, Company. And it's an oddities, curiosities, gallery of the unusual. Um, you never know what you're going to get or what to expect when you walk through the door. Um, and that's one facet of the business. And the other is the Grand Artique Production Company. And that's a, a multifaceted production company, a build, design, curate kind of company that we can make your imagination come to life. Whatever that is. If you desire a toga party at your next event, we can make that happen. If you want a jungle room inside of a grand ballroom, we can make a jungle room come true. Um, and we take the show on the road. We take everything that we have inside this shop and there's multiple different props and environments that we can create. And we take it from here to Michigan, from Michigan to Oregon, um, and all in between, setting up at major music and arts festivals and doing uh, fully immersive inner art interactive art installations, fully immersive interactive art installations. And those um, are really something that we specialize in. And these are big, grand um, footprints. These are, these are massive installations. Um, and we have a couple pictures here on the wall. And our website coming soon, which has been under construction, would showcase a little bit more of that. But um, yeah, we have a lot of big art installations that come to life with full uh, interactive characters and storylines. Kind of think Westworld uh, meets Swiss Family Robinson or something. And that's how I've managed to stay relevant. That's how I've managed to keep moving the needle forward, keep progressing, is by challenging myself to do some of the things that I never really thought possible. And then once they started to happen, I was like, wow, you can actually do this and make money and have friends and make trades and people are into this? This is really cool. And always changing, always evolving, always making something new. Um.
um, anything from Comic Con to Coachella to these big music and arts festivals, um, we've managed to partner up with really creative, innovative individuals and companies and do something awesome for them. We just got back from a job with Chibani Yogurt. We just did a job with GoFundMe. We just did a job with a YPO organization um, in Coronado. So those creative partnerships are something that they see the value in what we're doing and they want us to bring it to them. And a majority of what we are doing is bringing fun. We're bringing interaction, we're bringing experience, and we're bringing authenticity to the table in a world that sometimes can be a little plastic and a little bit mm, somewhere where you're like, well, I've seen Starbucks, but what, what else is out there? And, and Grand Artique is definitely something that will challenge that and uh, flip it upside down, so. And the optimal experience for us at Grand Artique is to bring people in and to explain to them a lot of people need a little bit of education on how it works in here. It's not a typical shop. It's not a typical space that they would go to to do the fast and furious interaction, the buy it and get out and try to get the turnstile moving as fast as possible. For us, we really like to engage with people to, to understand who they are and what they are and what they have. And a lot of what we do here is we um, encourage people to trade things that they have. And that's hard for people to understand at first. And so the education comes in there of explaining to them that it's not all about money at this shop, that we're not all about money, which seems like, how would you ever make money? How would you even still be in business? But what I found is that when I make relationships, when I make lasting relationships with people, it's the old saying, it's who you know, not what you know. And I know more people and that gives me more opportunity and that gives me more experience and that gives me more reason to be alive, to make more money, to have more interactions, to just have a better community surrounded by. And so the optimal experience is bringing someone in and having them shed some of these old ways of thought and and open up to something new too. Yeah, I think that in this world of like fast paced, fast food, buy it now, click here, get the Amazon package dropped to your house, that there's a lost sense of uh, personality. There's a lost sense of, of human interaction. And I think that people fiend for human interaction, but they don't understand it. They don't know it because they don't experience it every day. And so when they do experience it and they come in here, they start to feel it and it changes the whole dynamic of the interaction. It changes who they are, it changes who I am. It makes everybody in the space go, wow, this is actually happening. Like I didn't just click and buy this ring, like you're actually selling me the ring and I'm gonna trade you my ring. How did that even happen? And so, okay, so, yeah. Sorry about the horn out there. Sorry about the horn, but this is real. We're actually doing this. This is a real thing, just like my shop. And this is what we do. At okay. First, if it matters that I like it, that I believe in it, that it's genuine for us, then it translates to a genuine experience for my customer. Um, and that's a tagline for Grand Artique is genuine and unusual. And that's what we are. We're, we're genuine, we're authentic, we're 100% real. And people feel that. And when they feel that, they feel trust. And when they feel trust, they wanna buy something or they wanna trade something or they wanna let go of something. And to me, it's not always about making a dollar off of the customer. It's making sure that my customer has a good experience, that they wanna come back, that they feel like this is a place where they can call home, that they feel safe, that they feel comfortable, that they feel like, wow, I wanna talk to that guy again. I wanna go walk around his shop again just because it feels good. And I think that's what's important to the customer. They want to feel a trust. They don't want to be feel like they're being sold something all the time. Um, but they also want to walk away with some, an experience, a memory, uh, a piece of history, something that they can go home and, and think about later. The bottom line isn't the end result. We're not always talking about the bottom line, but we do need money to keep the gas in the tank, to keep the lights on, to keep the, to keep the space alive. Um, and we are trying to make money. We are out there 
working hard to make money. But what I found is that when you do something that you love, when you're really passionate about it, when you're, when you're all in, when you've put all your chips on the table, that the money has come in. We've managed to keep it going. We've managed to be scrappy and be innovative and be new and fresh and find ways to make money um, because in some of these environments, there's not big budgets. We haven't broken through to this big corporate world where we're getting monster budgets. We're still working with you know, a lot of bootstrap places and companies and doing this for art's sake, not for money. Um, but the money is coming in. So there's this balance that we're constantly walking. It's a little tightrope. And right now, we've, we've sort of just broke through to a new level where we've managed, you know, our P&Ls are looking good and, you know, our quarterly statements are coming out and we're like, wow, we're, we're actually, you know, making more money. Um, and that feels good too. Um, Um, I think the way that we've managed to keep such a solid group, such a solid team, is by making it feel like a family, by making it feel like you're part of something. Um, people that they are constantly ask, how do, I get, how do I get a job with the Grand Artigue? How do, I, how do I start here? And the running joke is that first you show up and you work for free, and then you work really hard, and then you'll get on the payroll. Um, and that seems odd, like it seems like, why would I show up and work for free? Why would I show up and do that kind of thing? And it's because of the way that the group makes people feel. Um, I like to think that it's, it's my brother and myself and my partners that have created something that when you step inside this world, it's a place that you don't want to leave. Um, and it's a place where it feels so whimsical and so magical that you don't, you're not really concerned about the money. You're there to create and you're there to make art and you're there to give people something that's unforgettable. And when you do that, you, you don't want to leave it. So people don't stop the Grand Artique. Um, they just, they keep going and I think that that's part of what's so magical about it or what's so awesome about having such a good team is a belief system that we don't want this to end. Yeah. I stay inspired by trying to stay cutting edge. I'm surrounded by a lot of creative individuals and seeing what's next, seeing the future, really pushing the limits is, is, uh, is a part of staying inspired. But, but using everything around me, my world around me is my inspiration. My children are my inspiration, my wife, my brothers, my family, all the people that I surround myself are constantly inspiring me. Um, this space in Barrio Logan inspires me every day. I drive underneath the bridge in, in Chicano Park and looking at the murals on the wall, those are inspiration. Surfing is inspiration. Just getting out in the world and really being present. Being present in the moment is the inspiration that I bring home with me every day and think about it. I take time to sit and ponder, sit and think about how can I be better? How can I make more money? How can I make more people happy? How can I bring my vision of art, my vision of creativity to the world? And how can that make someone else feel better? Imagining my business 10 years from now. You know, this is a, this is a thing that I do quite a bit. And I try to think of five year increments, but 10 years, 20 years, you know, what am I going to be doing? How old am I going to be? How old are my kids going to be? And what does it look like for the Grand Artique? And ultimately, there's been this uh, big talk about having our own space, our own property, our own place um, that would be very magical, whimsical, um, creative, ranch style spot on the water, hotel rooms or Airbnb rooms. and music, art, food, wellness, mindfulness, uh, retreat. You could get married there, you could, bring your, you could bring your corporate team there, you could bring your festival there, you could bring your birthday party, you could bring whatever you needed space to do to this place and leave 
with a feeling of, of wellness, of enlightenment, of having gathered something inside you that wasn't there. Inspiration, creativity, um, movement, art, all of it all packaged into one space where you can come and be yourself and leave feeling so much better. Something like that would be in the next 10 years, but we would love to keep our flagship store down here in Barrio Logan and this ever-changing environment um, with rents increasing and driving people out and artists out and the history of this space, you know, that could be challenging. So trying to gather enough funds and put enough of the connectors in San Diego together to possibly be able to buy a building and have a home for a permanent space um, where we could always be there for creativity, for a place of refuge, for a place to feel like home in the Grand RT. Oh, 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 oh.